Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Morrowind, where there is a cliff racer floating in midair because he's slightly too far away for the AI to take effect, I think. The AI distance or something. Either that or... No, there he goes. See, if I move slightly closer, he starts moving. Um, welcome back to Morrowind, where Fathis is currently making his way eastwards down Azira's coast because we are searching for uh, where Mil the place Milin Faram lives I, I, Odiniran I think it's called yes we're searching for Odiniran because Milin Faram a member of House Telvani is currently there and currently under siege by House Lalu and we need to go lift the siege and kill all those nasty Hlalu Imperial supporters. Because we can't have that. No, we can't. However, right now... I need some... I uh, need some magic back. So I'm just going to have to wade through the river, as pleasant as that is. While the magicka comes back. And that is a very big rock crab. Fathis slowly edges his way around the colossal crustacean. While even a shell that thick could not possibly withstand the bite of Merun's razor, he is less confident that his own arms and legs could withstand the pincers of the large creature. And it might have a disease. Continuing on his way, the Grand Master of the Morag Tong considers his current task. It's quite unlike the Telvani Magisters to really care enough about one another's well-being to dispatch reinforcements in a situation like this, particularly out here in the wastes of Vardenfell, where those mage lords particularly uninterested in the politics of Telvanes make their home. Fathis can only assume that Master Arian owes Milin Faram a favour, or is hoping to receive one in return. Alternatively, perhaps he simply feels that House Hlalu cannot be permitted to encroach upon Telvani territory with impunity. Whatever the reason, Fathis decides he should probably get there at least before the day is out, preferably dealing with as few examples of Vardenfell's psychotic wildlife in the process. Look at the uh, view in the distance there. If we take a little look at the map, see what we're seeing there. That, I believe, is the start of... There's a lot of forests that lead down this way into this sort of vague river valley. And I believe that's what we're seeing all over there, all those trees. I think, anyway. Could also be swampland. Just as easily. My knowledge of the geography over there is a little bit... on the uh, thin side. There's also a cave here. Might check that out later, but hopefully this is Odiniran. If it's not, nah. Moya. Not Odiniran, it's Moya, apparently. <sighs> well, if Milan Faram's not dead already, he's not going to be any time soon. Upon entering the old stronghold, Fathis is greeted by a grisly display of skulls and cloying darkness. He quietly takes his amulet of star vision from his pouch and slips it around his neck. The amulet's charm immediately illuminates the passage ahead, and as silently as possible, he draws his dagger and carefully proceeds forwards. we have here a dead dark elf well that much was obvious but he has a silver flame skewer uh, I will take that and hopefully remember to sell it at some point my inventory currently is absolutely full of stuff that I've kind of just forgotten to sell
Okay, this is actually quite a tough ghost. Did it? Greater ancestor ghost, yeah. Oof. Stealth failing this a little bit there. I'm not surprised, to be honest. Our sneak's only 43. I'm trying to be stealthy here, considering I no longer have Dewland following us around. I feel like this is possibly a good opportunity to actually try and improve our sneak a little bit. Instead of just blundering straight into everything. Sneak is not a great skill in Morrowind. It isn't honestly much changed from Daggerfall, the game that came before this. Um, it's very basic. And levels, as you can see, are not designed really with sneaking particularly in mind. Um, but it's something that's worth at least attempting. Getting sneak attack seems to be particularly difficult for some reason, because there have been occasions, a number of occasions, where I have managed to successfully sneak up on an enemy and uh, stab them in the back, and I haven't gotten that elusive sneak attack message on the bottom of the screen. It actually plays a special sound effect too when you do it, so... Maybe there's something I'm missing there, but... It seems almost impossible to achieve. Ah, uh, trap day. Eh? The reason I can see the door's details from here, of course, being because we are wearing uh, one of those magic gloves, the long fingers, telekinesis 25 feet on self. As you can see, I don't know if we can actually pick the door from here or try and disarm the trap from here. It's worth trying. We can. That is interesting. Now, what is it? what's even more interesting is that telekinesis in this game is a way to avoid traps. If you, even if you do set them off, you can um, you can avoid them by using telekinesis and activating the offending object from the other side of the room. Because it won't it won't lock onto your character; it'll only lock onto the spot in front of the chest or door in question. Okay, well we have a greater bone walker and some skeletons in there. don't particularly wish to let them out unless there's something in there of value that I want. Right now it doesn't feel like there is. I may return later if there is something I want. Interestingly right now we are sneaking as in we are concealed as indicated by the icon at the bottom left of the screen there even though battle music is actually occurring, so I don't know... I tr truly don't know whether we're technically sneaking right now. The game seems to think we are sneaking and also not sneaking at the same time on account of us being in a fight, according to the music. It's very confusing. This is not a game in which the battle music tends to get stuck. We're not playing Baldur's Gate here. So, that's a Bonewalker of some description, although I must admit he looks a bit different from the average Bonewalker for some reason. Maybe it's just the light. He's also pacing slowly this way. and remember to use our actual shield charms before we go into a fight. Right, I believe we managed to kill him before he managed to curse us. Greater Bone Walkers. They can curse you. And damage your strength, which is decidedly not good. And you know you're not imagining that uh, nasty humming sound, slightly demonic sounding. OK, 
Okay, what do we have here? Probably a necromancer. Much like Fathis, as a matter of fact, but Fathis is not about to let that stop him from killing this guy and taking his stuff, so... <laughs> Assuming he's hostile, which he probably is. However, a shield won't help us very much against a magic user. So let's find something that will. And yep, there we go. As you could see again there, that was a that was a textbook sneak attack, and yet I was not awarded the actual sneak attack bonus. It's unknown to me at present whether or not this guy would have actually been hostile, but Pathis wasn't about to take that chance, so Shimsil. Short blade, one handed. theoretically quite good. Fortify, cast when use fortify, sneak 5 points and chameleon 10% for 30 seconds on self. Chameleon 10% is not that great, but uh, the ring of regeneration though, that's a nice bit of kit. Common robe. I shall add it to my robe collection. And shimsel. Uh, it is a short sword, an ebony short sword by the looks of things. So, um, its damage is slightly higher than Mayrune's Razor, but its attack speed also, crucially, is not as high. So I think I'll stick with Mayrune's Razor, but interesting, nevertheless. Blasphemous Revenants. I believe I probably have a copy of that somewhere, but I'm going to take it anyway. Wouldn't hurt to have more than one edition. Cursed Clan Fear page. Now that is interesting. I wonder if I can pick it up in such a way as to not trigger the curse. Looks like no. <laughs> Luckily, a clan fear does not represent much of a threat to Fathis. Although, interestingly, that cursed page, assuming it works multiple times, could be an interesting source of Daedra Hearts. A potentially infinite source of Daedra Hearts, as a matter of fact. Special Flora of Tenrail. Don't know if I've got it, taken it anyway. The old book collection is going to grow quite rapidly from now on, I think. Okay, the enemy. Uh, darkest Darkness. Corpse Preparation. I believe we have every single volume of that at home. Fathes has often heard the phrase, Honor Among Thieves. In his experience, he's found that such a thing only sometimes exists. What he has decided, however, is that there is no honor among necromancers. To this day, Tragrilla remains the only necromancer he has encountered that has not attacked him on sight, excluding a few Talvani magisters upon whom the jury is still out, of course. This necromancer's abode is on the whole somewhat pitiful. Aside from a few books of dubious value, there is little here of great interest, although the curious cursed spellbook page does provoke a few thoughts. A rich source of Daedric alchemy ingredients? Possibly even a rich source of souls to trap? The only problem he can see is the inevitable need to dispose of the large pile of clan fear corpses that would result from such an industrious operation. Vivex sewer rats can only chew through so many bodies in a day, after all. And the more he feeds them, the more the creatures seem to multiply. For a worrying moment, Fathus considers whether or not he is unwittingly creating an epidemic. 
Perhaps it's best to leave the cursed page on a shelf untouched, after all. Alright, well. We didn't find no Daenerys, but we did find some interesting stuff. Nevertheless. I'm curious about this cave as well. I'm also curious about... Can you see that over there? I'll try and head over here and get a better look. There's a very interesting looking bit of terrain over there. There it is. Right there. I truly have no idea what that could be. Very weird rock formation, perhaps? It's curious. Very interesting. Over on the mainland, though, obviously, so... Or is it, actually? Yeah, no, I am, I am pretty sure that's actually on the mainland. Never mind. I don't intend to swim all the way over there to find out, and neither does Fatface, I think. However, on the other hand... Maba Ilu. What, play, what secrets does this place hold? Death, mostly, by the looks of things. Death that I can't actually see. Um. <clears throat> yeah, death, as I said. <laughs> oh dear. Fathos reaches for the handle of the cavern door and is suddenly struck with a feeling of tremendous danger. He hesitates, and finds himself strangely unable to bring himself to open it and proceed beyond. He steps back, shakes his head, and decides to move on. He's learned to heed his premonitions over the years, and today will be no different. He keeps checking the map and orientating himself with nearby landmarks as he travels. This is a skill that he has only recently learned after arriving in Vardenfell. In his previous life, he worked almost exclusively within the Imperial City and other provincial capitals. There was little call for cross-country travelling, and on the rare occasions when such an expedition was required for a job, he would generally hire a guide. Previously, Julan was his guide for much of his travels around the island, but since the angry young Ashlander's untimely demise, Fathis has been navigating the old-fashioned way once more. As he crests the hill, he sees the ancient Dwemer ruin of Nushurdams in the hazy distance as a brisk sea breeze wafts across him at the summit. In the distance are the echoing cries of cliff racers and the gentle splash of waves. A bit closer along the coastline, he spots one of the telltale Velothi domes in the opposite hillside that reveals the presence of an ancient hideaway that can only be Odiniran. With a brief gesture, he invokes a charm of water walking and makes his way across the calm waters of Azura's coast. Beneath his feet, he can see glittering shoals of tiny fish, seaweed, barnacles, and the occasional clam. In the deeper depths, he can see occasional shapes of larger creatures moving in the murk, probably slaughterfish or dregs, although he has no intention of going down to find out which. Okay. This surely has got to be it. Nashurdams is just down the road there. It's right there. Incidentally, I wouldn't mind checking it out once we're done here, but... Uh, this must be it. Yes, it is. Okay. Right. Let's prepare ourselves, shall we? Just in case, something really nasty is waiting for us on the other side. Is there anything else I can use? I suppose there is this.
10 seconds. Okay, well, so far, so good. The Hlalu are not exactly renowned mages, so... Or renowned warriors, for that matter. Interesting that she spotted us, and this one didn't. Let's try and keep it that way, shall we? Trapped, eh? We can do something about that. And we can do something about the lock. Okay, this is not another door leading into the same area as I thought it might have been. Interesting. Your suffering will be great. Ah! A necromancer, eh? Eating a lot of those lately. Somewhat primitively dressed necromancer, though, this one by comparison. That's interesting. Paralyze five seconds on target. Unfortunately, I've noticed that an awful lot of enemies seem to resist paralysis. Or at least they successfully resist paralysis spells. Ouch. Skeleton archers. Very irritating. There's a whole setup here. It's definitely the sort of place that someone was clearly living in. Ooh, vintage brandy. And Flynn. Not bad. Don't mind if I do. I, uh. Othril ring. Hmm. That might be useful for something later on. Ancient Dagoth brandy. Quite the little wine cellar our Millen Faram's got here. I'm sure he won't notice quickly enough that we've ransacked the place by the time we've dealt with all of his problems. And in either case, we can just blame the Hlalu. If anybody asks any questions. <laughs> hmm. He damaged my speed. I noticed that. Grave curse. Speed minus five. It's not good. I'm not sure if that counts as a disease or a curse or what. I don't know if a cure disease spell will actually get rid of it. And I don't particularly want to waste the last one that I've got, so... I think I'll just live with it for now. Yes, it's an interesting glitch that's appeared there. Let's just ignore that. <laughs> hmm, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Why is that over there? Oh, it's we've come back around again. That's the necromancer. All right. Um, so where does this lead, then, is the question. It's quite a substantial place, this, isn't it? Certainly in comparison to the last one we were in. And uh, there's some people here that are clearly already dead that I didn't kill. Probably Milan Faram's handiwork. Steel Blade of Heaven. That is quite an enchantment it's got there, you know. Luckily, I have a pair of boots that do that already.
A very rare and very valuable pair of boots, in fact. Ugh. Not a fan of giant spiders. some trouble here. That was very close. That was a very powerful Dremora. My goodness. With a very heavy longsword. Sadly, not a Daedric longsword, just a Dremora one. Um. That was very close indeed. Luckily we are alive though. I'm beginning to suspect that might be one of Mill and Farum's servants. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be able to tell the difference between me and the Halalu intruders. Ah, we've got someone locked up in the prison here. That's Bone Walker. Bone Walkers, I should probably really engage from range if I can. Although, having said that, it's the rat that gave me the disease in the end. Wither. Yeah, strain, strength, and endurance 10, endurance 10 points. That I could most certainly live without. Also, my Dark Brotherhood Curus is broken. Interesting. I completely forgot to take pay attention to the state of my armor. Whoops. All right, well. Uh, where's my... My carrying capacity is nearly full anyway, actually. I think it's all those books I picked up. I'll have to get back to my hideout and start putting them into the library as soon as possible. Right. Milin Faram, I would pursue, presume. I am never too busy for a good talk. At least you're sensible enough to know that I'm not one of them. Unlike your minions. Yes, Odin Iran is my home. If you wish to help me, please kill Ramasa Othral, the leader of the Halalu who pester me. Feel free to kill my servants. I can usually raise them again. Also, please leave v Vedalea Othral to me. I do not want her damaged or altered in any way, at least not by you. Ramasa Othral. I have the ring of a dead Othral. I don't know if it's the right Othral. It just says Othral Ring. Alright. Well, I didn't explore quite everything down there when I was there previously. Clearly I have uh, overlooked... What was her name? Ramassa. Leave Vedalea alone. I assume Vedalea is the lady that is currently... Locked inside the jail here. That would be you, I, I'm assuming. There is no escape. She's not very clever, I'll say that much. So let's go find Ramasa, I suppose. Ramasa, where are you? I have a blade with your name on it. I think possibly the need for stealth at this point is uh, 
growing smaller. Not that we're very good at stealth, but there is only really two ways to improve it. A, get a very expensive training, and B, just keep trying and failing. But for now... She might not necessarily have been hostile. But, once again, why take the chance? Good old shield enchantments. Ah, Ramasa! Should have killed you on the way in, would have saved myself an awful lot of time, but never mind. Let's see if we can get this open. Uh, a probe. Very good, and a little pick. There we go. Well, that was clearly worth the effort. Gotta love that leveled loot. Definitely brought a lot of levitation potions with them for some reason. Well, job's done. Okay. Is Ramasa Othwell dead? She is? Excellent! I can get on with my experiments. Since you helped me with these meddling Lalu, I might be persuaded to share the results of my research. Do go on. Scrolls of Summoning are, without exception, based on the law of similarity, as you must know. While others use parts of the creature, such as Daedra Skin for summoning Daedra, I have developed new methods based on a recovered Dwemer machine. My scrolls only have an image of the Daedra, which works almost as well as a Daedra skin or heart, at least, uh, and a fraction of the cost. Yes, quite. Why not take a sample of these new scrolls and examine them yourself? Now, if you will excuse me, I really must get back to work now. Seven million faram scroll added to our inventory. May you find me worthy of your attention. That's what I like to hear. Uh, let's have a look then. Millen Faram Scrolls. Summon Daedroth for 120 seconds on self. I have seven of them. That is a kingly gift. Thank you very much, Mr. Faram. Just wondering if he has any books that I might need. Lots of copies of Vampires of Vardenfell 1 of Volume 2 knocking about in these places, isn't there? All quite valuable, but I already have a couple of editions myself. The official business of the day is concluded. Indeed, as he suspected, there was no great rush. The only reason there was a siege in the first place was because Millen Faram's minions presented too great an obstacle for the Halalu invaders. In fact, they almost got the best of Fathus, he reluctantly admits to himself. He wonders what is required to bind a Dremora permanently to a place like this to act as a guardian, because they are obviously fearsome warriors. It is a sad thing to admit, but his own revenants are hardly in the same league. It is his ambition to eventually start creating and binding much more powerful varieties of the undead, like mummies. But his various books on the subject have already informed him that it will be a challenging task. As for the Hlalu, they offered pitiful resistance, including that oddly dressed necromancer. Wearing furs and wielding a club made of bones, really? And it was an Altma too. He would have expected better. Perhaps all the competent necromancers are already spoken for by House Telvani, and the club-wielding imbecile was all they could afford. As Fathis levitates over the hill, 
His final goal lies in clear sight. He now owns a quite substantial collection of Dwemer artifacts and texts, and has taken a keen interest in the subject of both their demise and their great works of technology. Perhaps it is because he's not a naturally talented mage himself, Fathis takes great interest in the Dwemer's scientific accomplishments. Imagine the things he could accomplish if he could somehow reverse engineer their great works. Even something as simple as their metal automatons. Within reason, he tries to investigate every ruin that he can, searching for one more piece of the ancient puzzle that might reveal some great and terrible hidden knowledge. Vardenfell was, after all, once the centre of Dwemer civilization. If their greatest secrets are not to be found here, then where else? Hmm. Someone's been here. Yes, I thought you might be interested in fighting me. Well, I'd like to check this place out. The Wimmer ruins are usually at least a little bit interesting. Oh, well, the Guardians are still very much active, it seems, although they've not spotted me just yet. But I suspect if I move much further from the spot, that will quickly change. Now would be an excellent, actually an excellent time to try out the uh, the new scrolls. Honestly, and I think some additional reinforcements. Well, done everybody, although this one I can't help but notice. There we go. Paid absolutely no attention to its allies being destroyed. One can only suspect that perhaps the ancient detection systems in these things are a little bit on the rusty side. Huh, hello. Hmm. Would one of you mind terribly just dealing with that? Thank you. Oh, there was nothing in there. Wow. This Daedroth is, um... In fact, is it the Daedroth or is it the spider that's doing all that electric shocking? Difficult to say. Normally Daedroths shoot poison. But maybe it was changing it up a bit on account of it fighting a Dwemer construct. Curious. Either way... Bad idea to get in its way when it's busy doing its thing. These scrolls are almost also... They last about two minutes, don't they? So he's, he's stuck around for a while, hasn't he? Raw glass. Quite valuable. Also, a little on the heavy side. Now would have been a good time to have one of my revenants with me, admittedly. Um, well... I 
I keep this with me for a reason. Unfortunately, though, I'm not very skilled at using it in combat. Problem? Uh, do I have something that can quickly... Ah, that'll do the trick. Thud. <laughs> it is so satisfying the way they fall over like that. Alright. Bone mold shield. No dwemer mace. Beautiful bits lying around here, actually. Illarok. Ilkurok, even, sorry. Constant effect, fortify spear and night eye. That is, by all accounts, an excellent weapon. Unfortunately, we are not actually skilled in the use of the spear. In fact, we're downright terrible with the spear, probably more likely to hurt ourselves with it than the enemy with that kind of skill. Scrap metal, also valuable, mostly for making revenants with. Well, let's make use of that telekinesis, shall we? As you saw, the trap went off, but we were well out of harm's way. Ah, an armorer's hammer. Let's quickly make use of this, shall we? In a somewhat cack-handed fashion, on account of us not being very skilled with armorer, but it's free repair, even a little bit. In fact, we've just repaired this enough to be able to put it back on again. The Stwema shield, on the other hand, it's not... Certainly not valueless at 800, but also quite heavy. And considering without the stanchion I am already over encumbered, perhaps not worth taking. Those I'll have though. Let's see if we can quickly do a bit more repair with this. Very nice. I am still probably going to have to visit an armorer, though, and fork over a bunch of cash. Hmm. Okay. Interesting that I can unlock level 60 with these now. There's a master's lockpick, admittedly, but uh, that's higher than I thought I could do. Considering security is not one of my major or minor skills, we've gotten quite far with it, haven't we? Got all the way up to 42. Although one of my magic gloves certainly helps with that nimble fingers there. Um, let's re-equip the stanchion. <laughs> No need to disarm the trap, I suppose, when you can just do that. What do we have in here, then? Some big old crystals. Nobody in here, either. Just these. Interesting. One could only assume the Dwemer were studying these for some reason. And here they still are. They're not a particularly common occurrence, those in Dwemer Ruins, are they? This is something unique. No, it's the wooden staff. 
Lots of gemstones. Lots more scrap metal. And lots more Dwemer coins. Not bad. I can go without the boots, though. I am beginning to suspect I should probably hotkey the stanchion. I'll replace that since I don't have it anymore. There we go. So hotkey number three can be the stanchion. There we go. That's going to make life a little bit easier. What else have we got here? Dwemer dagger? Hmm. I didn't know they made Dwemer daggers. Well, I think we're probably done here now. More or less, Silver War Axe. You know, from oh, the other side of the room, looking into the gloom over there, I thought that was a torture rack for a, for a second, but no, it's just a, it's just an overturned sh shelf of for books or whatever. So never mind. I was about to say the combination of the weird crystals and a torture rack would certainly make for an interesting kind of what on earth was this room for? Question. Looks like we're done here though. As for what purpose this place once served when the uh, when the Dwemer lived here, who knows? An outpost of some sort, obviously. It's not very big, but... Perhaps a mine? A mining complex of some sort? It would explain the exposed ore vein down there. And maybe that's where they got the crystals from. Digging in the earth, and they found them. Difficult to say, or perhaps the crystals were added long after this, the, the one that disappeared. Perhaps this place was made into a home of sorts by some sorcerer or enchanter over the millennia. And it really is millennia. It was thousands of years ago now. I think, anyway. Unless I've got my timeline completely and utterly wrong. Looks like there's another Dwemer ruin over there, but I think I've had my fill judging by the fact that I can't even move without using the magic stanchion, so. <laughs> um, probably time I got out of here. By which I mean, naturally, recall out of here. <laughs>